Good morning. Welcome to worship with the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria. I'm Regina Stanley, and I have the pleasure of serving as the membership coordinator for this congregation. This is a beloved community striving to live its mission of embracing freedom, loving wholeheartedly, growing in mind, body, and spirit, and adding to the healing of the world. We are unap unapologetically progressive in welcoming people of all ethnicities and races, sexual orientation and gender identities, social and economic situations and abilities. We advocate for human rights and we strive to be good stewards of our earth. In living our mission, we recognize the network of relationships of which we are a part. This is the ancestral home of the Peoria people. They and other nations were here long before the first European settlers came down the Illinois River. We honor the Peoria people for who they were and for who they are today. Thank you for joining us in person and on Zoom. One of the lessons from the past few years is how precious it is to come together, to be with other people, to expand our circles of care and kindness. If you are new, please help us get to know you. Stay for visiting during coffee hour in Fellowship Hall or in the Zoom room after service. After service, please take a moment to greet your neighbor. This time of year always brings a wide range of new and returning people. Please be sure to say hello. A couple of notes for this week. If you're available, please help us to undeck the halls on Tuesday at 1 o'clock. Come help us dismantle and return the holiday tree and decorations to their place so they're ready for next year. Many hands make light work. Also, we're making um, care kits for unhoused people in Peoria. These are simple Ziploc bags filled with necessities to make someone's day a little better. You can sign up online to donate items or just bring them to the box in the foyer by the end of the day, Monday, January 8th. Then join us to assemble the bags after worship on January 14th. This is an all ages service project. Please see Jesse Laughlin if you have any questions. Also, after service, um, join me in Fellowship Hall for coffee hour, and we'll have a little discussion, and we'll reflect back on 2023, and we'll um, look ahead to 2024. Please take a moment to uh, look in your order of worship, check the Friday UU News, or swing by the bulletin board in the atrium to get more details about upcoming events and see what's going on. The parts of today's service are from the UUA president, Reverend Dr. Sophia Betancourt, and from other UUs across the country. This service was created for congregations to share around the new year. Some parts will be live and some will be video, including the sermon. We are happy to include this message as we enter 2024. Now, we ask you to take a moment, turn your devices to worship mode, either silent or vibrate, Please rise and join in the opening song on the screens, Wings of a Dove. If I had the wings of a dove, wings that would take me where I want to go, I'd fly from the utmost way out into space. Oh, no, 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 there is no hiding place. If I had the wings of a dove, wings that would take me where I want to go, sing, I'd fly from the utmost way out into space oh no 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 there is no hiding place if i had the wings of the dove 
Wings that would take me where I want to go. I'd fly from the utmost way out into space. Oh, no, 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 no. There is no hiding place. If I had to wait. Of a dove, wings that would take me, wings that would take me where I want to go. I'd fly from the unknown, way out into space. Oh no, 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 there is no hiding place. You get one more chance. If I had the wings of a dove, yeah. wings that would take me where I want to go, I'd fly from the utmost way out into space. Oh, no, 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 there is no hiding. Oh, no, no, oh, no, 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 there is no hiding place. Oh, no, 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 there is no hiding place. Our opening words are Weaving Magic, Love Becoming by Byron Tyler Poles. We are joined together, connected as one people, one body, united by the magic that shapes and forms all things that which is love. Here we join together once more to kindle the flame, to tend to the faith which sustains us, much like the faith which sustained our ancestors of old, and will sustain our descendants to come here. Then let us join our magics together so that we might amplify the love that is embodied in our being together. Let us hold space for this sublime act with song and prayer, bowed heads and uplifted spirits, with wailing and weeping, with shouts of affirmation and dances of jubilation, for they are all welcomed here. May we weave the delicate threads the growing roots, the shifting soils of our lives, so it, that we might be held and so that we might grow alongside the spirit of life. God eternal, the great magic weaver, let us work our magic. Let us practice love. Let us be one for holy. Is this moment for holy? Is our bond with one another for holy? Is the world becoming? Amen. Now I'd like to invite Sarah and Bowie McAlexander up for our chalice lighting. And Riley. Thank you. We are Unitarian Universalists. This is the Church of the Open Mind. This is the Church of the Helping Hands. This is the Church of the Loving Heart. Together in, is the Church of, oh, we have said that. Together we care for our earth <laughs> and work for peace in the world.
All That We Do Not Know by Reverend Susan L. Sakaki. Day by day, month by month, year by year, we are confronted with all that we do not know, that we do not understand, that we do not grasp. Sometimes we are humbled by this knowledge and say, God, it is too wonderful for me to comprehend, but I know this universe is more grand and more beautiful than I ever could have imagined. And I give thanks for the blessing of being here and seeing, hearing, experiencing, and sensing all that is so wonderful around and in me. Sometimes we are saddened by this knowledge and say, oh, merciful spirit, we need to have the burden of hurt and suffering removed from us. Grant us the courage, the wisdom, and fortitude to bear the pain of living. Send us those who will carry our burdens for a short while and send us those who will comfort us with their healing words and thoughts. Sometimes we're angered by this knowledge and say, in the name of justice and compassion, if it be in our power, give us the strength and ability to right the wrongs, for we do not, nor does any person in the world deserve this. Sometimes we're made joyous by this knowledge, and we say, spirit of life, who blesses our world. We rejoice and cheer for our glorious life. Sometimes we are made curious by this knowledge and say, holy and inexplic inexplicable is this life. I have no idea what happened or how it happened, but somehow, some way, something changed, and I am free to explore new ways of being. Please always let me continue to search for the unknown in myself and others. Let us enter a time of meditation with this spirit of unknowing. During the music for meditation, you are welcome to come forward and light candles, marking what is in your mind and heart with an intentional act. For those joining us online, please light candles with us or simply receive the gift of light from those of us here. Let us begin.
We Are Connected by Reverend Leslie Takahashi. Despite distance and fear, we are connected. Despite loneliness and change, we are connected. Across different experiences and lives, we are connected. Even in the face of the inevitable losses of life, we are connected. When we wish to laugh, we are connected. When we need to mourn, we are connected. Across a nation divided, we are connected. Even when we dance alone in a room, we are connected. In the heat of the sun, we are connected. In the glow of the stars, we are connected. Across the limits of our imagination, we are connected. Even when nature trembles, we are connected. This is the time for sharing the joys and sorrows of the congregation. We continue to hold space for Kathy McNeil as she deals with the death of her father shortly after the death of her mother. Please keep her in your thoughts. And I have a joy to share. My youngest son moved back from Texas yesterday and made it safely back shortly after midnight last night. <laughs> Let's take one more moment in quiet for all that is around us and within us. Amen, shalom, blessed be. Now I'd like to invite Jesse Laughlin up to share our story for today. Our story today is adapted from one by Leah Lakshmi Kaipesna Sumashrina. It is called The Bridge of Flowers. I need you to know that this story is told in the voice of a young girl who loves her family very much. I am quiet and I listen a lot. That is why I get to tell this story. So here is what happened. My mom, Soraya, is a witch. That means she listens to people talk. She makes potions for them out of flowers and dirt and rocks, sometimes even spit. And she helps them with their problems. My papa, Kamal, is a scientist, and they spent a lot of time looking at tiny pieces of moss under different microscopes. When mom and papa fell in love, they planted two trees. They were close enough together that they could be near one another, but far enough apart to have room to grow. So mom cast a spell and Baba added fertilizer, and the two trees grew quickly and really, really tall. Now, Mom and Baba love each other, but they don't always love living together. Sadaya has a tendency to leave crystals and chapstick and baking grease everywhere. And Baba likes clean counters so that the baking grease doesn't end up in their experiments. They fight about this sometimes. Sadaya thinks that the baking grease and crystals and chap lipstick are part of the magic. And Bapa says, clean counters are magical too. So eventually, Sadaya and Kamal decide to live close to one another, but also apart. And they build houses. 
in the very same trees that they planted when they fell in love. And most importantly, the space between the two houses, there is a bridge, a bridge of flowers. So you can go back and forth whenever you want to. It had roses and sunflowers. It had lavender and mullen. And it had cactuses, one of which is apparent to my cactus, Agnes. More about her later. It was a beautiful bridge. And it allowed us to go back and forth whenever we wanted. My sibling, Kumar, after a while, added a skateboarding ramp to the bridge. They would go to the bridge and do an ollie and land on the ramp and go around and do the whole thing again. That bridge kept our family woven together. Me, I stay inside pretty often. I journal, I'm quiet. Sometimes outside is just too much for me. But late at night, when the whole world is listening, I sit in the middle of the bridge and breathe. Now, one day, times got really stressful in the world, and mom was trying to help more and more people. So she picked more and more flowers from the bridge. And Papa, well, they were working very hard to try and clean the air, so they took more moss and lichen from the bridge. They did this work to support the community. And they picked more flowers more moss, more lichen. And one morning, when we went outside, we saw that they had picked too much and the bridge had collapsed. Mama and Papa started fighting about whose fault it was. <sighs> we just don't have time to deal with this. And they went back to work. This is something that Grown-ups do sometimes work a little extra when they're stressed. But Kumar and I did not think that was okay. Some members of the community suggested that we didn't actually need a bridge after all. Sadaya did have a ramp. Kamal had an elevator. And it wasn't as if we couldn't see each other. But Kumar and I liked the ease of the back and forth. What if I left Agnes in the wrong house? What if Kumar needed their backpack? So we decided that something had to be done. Now, I don't always get along with my sibling, but we talked and we strategized and we came up with an idea. Hmm, let's make a plan. So I went to mom's cabinet. You know, the one she leaves unlocked because she trusts us. I took some of her magical honey, her special dirt, and her seeds. And Kumar took lichens and moss from Baba's lab. And we came and we brought our hands together and we thought about what we most wanted and closed our eyes and wished. And when we opened our eyes, the bridge was back. But this time, it didn't connect just our houses. It connected us to our libraries and the place where Kamal went for organizing. 
It connected us to the shelter and the food bank and the bridge was beautiful. So we went to wake up Sadaya and Kamal and show them what we had done, but it turns out they were already awake. They were working late at night. And when they came outside and saw the bridge, it was good. So it turns out that I have magic too, even though I'm quiet. Or maybe because I'm quiet, I have magic. And it turns out it's good to live with people you love. And it's good to sometimes have space for yourself and for growth. And the truth is that sometimes when we least know what we're doing is when we are at our most magical. And that is the end of our story. I wonder when you are at your most magical. I wonder what you need to grow. And I wish you all those things in the coming years. This is an all ages service and the kids are welcome to stay with us. There's also nursery care and this would be a time that you could pop out and spend some time in the nursery. It is the collective gifts that make it possible for us to be here today. Those offerings of service, care, and money of the past lead a direct line into our lives, whether this is our first Sunday visiting or if we have been here for generations. We receive those gifts, contribute our own for our sake and for that of our children. What we gather together is passed forward to the people we will never meet. It is good to make an offering when we meet in worship. We also practice sharing our plate. One third of the undesignated funds collected during worship go to a local community group that is serving our area. For the month of December, our Share the Plate recipient is the Peoria NAACP chapter. Founded in 1915, the Peoria branch of the NAACP works for equity and justice in all aspects of life. Voting, education, housing, employment, and the judicial system. For Share the Plate, two-thirds of the undesignated collection goes to the church, one-third to the named agency. Please use the envelopes to make your pledge or indicate a specific use. See the QR code in the order of service to make an online donation. Or the link on Zoom or Facebook to, don to donate remotely. Thank you.
Winter Blessing by Reverend Dr. Rebecca Parker. In the shadowed quiet of winter's light, earth speaks softly of her longing. Because the wild places are in tears, come, she cries to us, kneel down here on the frosty grass and feel the prayer buried in the ground. Bend your ear to my heart and listen hard. Love this world, she whispers. Distill peace from the snow and water the cities with mercy. Weave wonder from the forest and clothe grief with beauty. Rest in the rhythm of the turning year. Trace the bending arc rounding the curve toward justice and vow anew to do no harm. The winter trees stand watch, haloed in the last gleams of a slanting sun. Glory sings here. Heaven echoes the call. Repeat the sounding joy. Make your life an answer. Bow, praise, rise. Please rise in body or spirit to sing with Leah Morris and her song, Shelter Me. Sweet spirit of light and love, sweet spirit of light and love, Sweet spirit of light and love, spread your wings and shelter me. Spirit of sweet light spirit of love. light and love. Of sweet light spirit of light and love. Sweet spirit of light and love. Spread your wings and shelter me. Spirit of sweet, spirit of light and love. Sweet, spirit of light and love. Sweet, spirit of light and love. Spread your wings and shelter me. Our sermon today is from Reverend Dr. Sophia Bettencourt, President of the, Unite of the Unitarian Universalist Association. It is a pleasure to share her message today. My beloved housemate and chosen family, the Reverend Dr. Devorah Greenstein has been excited about winter sowing lately. This is the practice of starting seeds outdoors in the winter months, long before most of us think about planting gardens. It's a fairly simple and practical idea. Most gardeners save plastic containers from around the house that we might otherwise recycle, and we prepare them with soil and seeds and lids so they can protect the potential that they house through the coldest months of the year. Why do we do this? Couldn't we look at beautiful pictures and seed catalogs instead and dream of all that we might plant in the spring months? I know that that has long been my personal practice. Why would we follow what for some of us are the winter holidays by tucking tiny kernels of life into unlikely spaces? I've decided to embrace this idea of setting seed long before signs of life will be visible as a type of leaning in to the new year. How many of us like me have gotten into a habit of disparagement at the year's turning? I remember holiday ornaments in 2020 that had language I probably shouldn't repeat in the pulpit without good cause woven into these beautiful snowflakes 
I think we still have a small plastic dumpster with flames coming out of the top as a representation of our disparagement and dismay with the year prior. I can't remember if it was 21 or 22. Politics, pandemics, and ideologies have turned what I used to associate with fireworks and other festive celebrations into a kind of creative dismissal of all that has come to pass in the prior 12 months. Don't misunderstand me. I fully embrace the power of humor that allows us to laugh our way closer to hopefulness and possibility. We need more of that. And I'm not here to censor how we keep ourselves going in difficult times. But as often happens in my life, I can hear the echoes of my grandmother's teachings when I get a little too comfortable in how I process all the things. She used to teach me about the magic at the turning of the year, and she encouraged me to do whatever thing I most want to spend my time on or have shaped the year to come just as the clock strikes midnight on December 31st. I think this is related to that tradition of kissing a loved one right at the end of the countdown. Her encouragement reminds me that even in those most difficult years of active quarantine in the face of this ongoing pandemic, there were beautiful things to be proud of that didn't belong in the dumpster fire for all that it made us laugh in those isolating days. A lot of that pride for me was grounded in the ways that our congregations and communities showed up for one another, showed up for the work of justice. It was grounded in my gratitude for our religious professionals, for our lay leaders and our nationals, UUA staff, as they pivoted and resourced and supported us through the unknown. Most are still recovering from that nonstop labor. Beloveds, we leaned into community care in profound ways, and I am so proud of how we continue to do so, even as many of us, though not all of us, experience fewer restrictions in our activities than we did then. We built magical bridges, the very kinds of connections and interdependence that we continue to live into together in new ways. Those bridges between and among us require tending, as does the religious witness that we hold together in the world in common cause. In the story that I shared for today's service, we learned about a family negotiating their relationships to one another in their day-to-day -day living. In the bridge of flowers by Leia Lakshmi Piepsna Samarasinha, she invites us to consider the beauty in how we intentionally maintain our connections to each other and invest in bringing our values to bear in the world. This unique bridge connecting people across love, across differences in how they approach everyday life, their belief systems and community engagement still allows for the creation of beauty and magic as beauty and science and magic weave together a path that can be navigated by everyone. It keeps them connected to their children, to their people, keeps them connected even when stress seems to rob them of their joy. I probably don't need to remind you that when times were difficult and two people who loved one another profoundly gave more than they could sustainably give to maintain and support their surrounding communities, the bridge of flowers collapsed. Not only did it collapse, but some outside of their nuclear family discouraged them from rebuilding the bridge. Soraya had a ramp after all, and Kamal had an elevator. It wasn't as if they could no longer reach each other with enough effort, but the love at the center of their living space was missing and it took beauty and magic from unexpected places to reweave the interdependence that had long nurtured that family. I can imagine my grandmother telling those children to hold the seeds and the dirt and the honey and the spores together at midnight at the turning of the year. 
Of course, we still have time to set intentions or to weave magic for 2024 and the purposeful naming of what we most long to turn our focus toward feels important in this story. What are you most proud about from 2023? In what ways did your congregation or community encourage you to live more fully into all that you hold most precious in this past year? How did they surprise you? How did you surprise yourself? Imagine that the great potential of our liberal and liberating tradition could be nurtured through the coming months in something as simple as a reused gallon jug. Maybe there is soil in the surrounding area that is already adapted to the climate where you live, or maybe you have collected seeds from plants that have grown more savvy about their surroundings over the years. I believe that our Unitarian Universalist faith is uniquely suited to the work of justice, to showing up for the rights and freedom of all. We have everything we need to respond to these times, even in moments of devastation or fear, even when bombs fall, even when ideologies of hatred and separation are lauded around the nation, even when the bridge that holds our hopes and dreams manages somehow to fall. There is a power and a hopefulness in how each one of us can set our intentions for the coming year and not wait on sun or bird song or better weather to do the work of new growth. Right? Earth itself can cradle our dreaming as we gear up for all that is yet to come. To put those kinds of efforts at faithful living into another kind of theological context, I want to remind us of the writings of the Reverend Kenneth Patton on the Temple of Beauty. I consider Patton one of our modern universalist theologians whose draw to universal religion was such that he theorized the idea of a religion for one world, and he worked to bring it into being at the Charles Street Meeting House in Boston. This was Patton's commitment, the seeds he planted into the great potential of our faith. For Patton, universalism needed to be expanded. It needed to be made large enough to become an expression that included a universal humanity, universal peace, universal welfare, universal health, universal freedom, universal security, universal science and understanding. I can imagine him reweaving a bridge of flowers with these words from his 1964 book, A Religion for One World, where in trying to describe for us how we might learn to live together in community with all of humankind, he writes, this is one world. You are one humanity. Live therefore in peace and till the garden of the earth. Make your days and the years of your children a glad time upon the earth. Patton believed that religion, when drawn beyond the bounds of any one culture, any one expression or any one group of people, contained within it the possibility of bringing into being all that is most right in the world. So here, goodness, freedom, justice, understanding, kindness, consideration, and the dismantling of discrimination and prejudice all reach their most noble, compassionate, and complete dignity, grace, and power. It's a lot to expect from one universal tradition. But Patton believed that the potential for this possibility lay within reach. If only we could learn and find good ways to describe it and to teach ourselves how to recognize it in its echoes through human art and human culture. Now I know that we have learned a great deal about the dangers 
of trying to define one big T truth that is available for all people. Right? It's not the availability that is the issue. It's the likelihood that one dominant group's perspective will be elevated as the ultimate goal to the erasure of all other cultural and communal expressions. That is not what Patton is calling for. But still we know, right, to hold ourselves accountable to the impact of power in those scenarios. But what I most want to hold on to from Patton's thinking is the very practical idea that liberals need good language and ideals to describe the things that we most long to bring into being. Our very pluralistic approach to Unitarian Universalism can make agreeing on shared language difficult, and without it, it's hard to collaborate with one another or to hold on to all that we hold dear. For Patton, the highest ideal that we can strive for in all of our efforts is beauty. I don't think he meant that in a temporary or frivolous or vain kind of a way. He writes that unlike goodness or truth, words that we often lift as ideals in our tradition, beauty includes the highest expression of our values. Right? He argues that there can be truth that is not beautiful, goodness that is not beautiful, but that beauty as its core is both truthful and good. And he reminds us that every expression of beauty born of our human interconnections serves as a kind of prophetic witness to what might best heal this world. Patton calls us to build temples of beauty. For me, those would probably take the form of gardens and to fill them with everything that will preach our greatest ideals on our behalf. So what beauty do you most want to call into being in 2024? How are your congregations and your communities leaning into all that is most needed in this coming year? How are you helping to keep those bridges well tended? From the perspective that I am privileged to hold as the president of your Unitarian Universalist Association, I can tell you that there is already a lot to be proud of in our efforts in community. I hear from our field staff that care for each other far beyond the bounds and the limits of Unitarian Universalism remains the bedrock of this faith. I hear from our organizing strategy team again and again as they work with partner organizations around the country that they are thanked for the ways that you use serve as the dependable core of volunteer efforts for justice in their communities. I get to witness the ways in which our national level volunteers all across our tradition give their very best to keeping the values and the ideals of Unitarian Universalism alive in the world. And sometimes I get to sit with a few of you in small groups where I'm told again and again how this faith saves lives. Beloveds, I'm not here to tell you what seeds to plant in the coming year. I can tell you some of mine. In this shared ministry and with the wisdom of so many others by my side, I am tucking the seeds of climate justice into my winter sowing this year. Alongside it go the seeds of democratic strategy, bodily autonomy and decriminalization, with your dedicated national staff, I get to plant seeds of accountability in ministry and congregational life, seeds of leadership development, resource production, ministry with youth and families, and greater equity among our religious professionals writ large. Together, we will continue to sow seeds that protect the most vulnerable among us, and together we will you you the vote again in this coming year. The garden of my dreams is born of the great potential that I know lives at the heart of this faith, and the love that we call into being at the center of it all is more than enough, more than enough to help 
our dreaming bear fruit. Loves, these have been challenging times, and the beauty that we bring into being together will be enough. May 2024 shower you in blessings, and may you in turn take those blessings and share them in the world. Thank you for all that you are and for all that you will yet do. May it be so. Amen. Ashe. And blessed be. Freedom is my birthright. Freedom is my birthright. I was born in freedom. I will grow in freedom. I claim my freedom now. Freedom is my birthright. Freedom is my birthright. Freedom is my birthright. Freedom is my birthright. I was born in freedom. I was born in freedom. I will grow in freedom. I will grow in freedom. I claim my freedom now. I claim my freedom now. Now, see, freedom is your birthright. Freedom is my birthright. Freedom is your birthright. Freedom is my birthright. Freedom is your birthright. I was born in freedom. You were born in freedom. I will grow in freedom. I must grow in freedom. I claim. Your freedom now, freedom to love, freedom to live, free to receive, free to forgive. Freedom is power. Freedom is my birthright. Freedom is our birthright. Freedom is my birthright. Freedom is our We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment until we meet again. As we go forward from here, may we be ever open to the beauty that is all around us. May we remember that the mighty oak can be found in the smallest acorn. And may we find hope where there appears none. This is part of life's magic that is all around us. May we find strength by having faith that we are surrounded by beauty. Oneness, love, connection, and the magic that is love. Let this connectedness carry us into our next becoming. 
keep love and hope alive. He's with you. Comfort for you. Healing for you. Love with you, peace with you, comfort for you. God with